Okay, so there are three uh, main regulatory processes that are uh, important in regulating uh, arterial pressure. And those are listed here. And uh, we'll begin first talking about the baroreceptors, which are neurally mediated um, fast response. We'll also be talking about the hormonally regulated renin angiotensin aldosterone system in another video. And then we'll end up in finishing with the other regulation systems of the arterial blood pressure. Uh, notable to say that the main ones are the baroreceptor and the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. So let's uh, go ahead and start talking about the fast neurally mediated baroreceptors. So uh, in this example, I'm, I'm going to illustrate uh, uh, low blood pressure and uh, that can be due to, to many uh, things and uh, in this example let's just imagine that uh, we get a patient with an acute uh, hemorrhage. So uh, when this patient gets acute hemorrhage and now the body is going to uh, fastly uh, uh, activate the, the barrier receptors in order to raise that blood pressure. So our main goal here is to raise the blood pressure back up because having low blood pressure is an issue because if our low blood pressure then we don't have enough blood to the brain and then our brain can die we don't have blood, enough blood to our organs our organs can die and cause ischemia especially in the, in the kidneys so let's go ahead and start with this so we already discussed that this is a fast neural mechanism it's a, it's a negative feedback that it was developed uh, and our body adapted to it uh, and it's responsible for about minute-to-minute -minute, uh, regulation of the arterial blood pressure. So that means that every every second you're sitting here, the reason that your blood pressure is regulated is because of this system and also the renin angiotensin system, which we'll talk about in the second video. Now, those barrier receptors that we are talking about, those what are they? They are stretch receptors, and they were located in the walls of the carotid sinus near the bifurcation of the common carotid arteries. So. And um, by the order we have the uh, carotid arteries, they come off about the about the middle of that uh, bifurcation where that happens is where we have those uh, barrier receptors. Now, the the following steps I'm gonna illustrate and uh, of what happens in the barrier receptors by going through this figure. So looking here, we have the arterial pressure is low. So what what's gonna happen is we uh, the the body senses a low stretch on the carotid sinus barrier receptors because we don't have enough blood or we don't have enough pressure exerting on that barrier receptor which it's supposed normally would just be fine so now the barrier receptor uh, senses this low stretch of the carotid sinus and therefore there is low firing rate of the carotid sinus and uh, this is by some nerve called Herring's nerve which we don't need to worry about now what's the response the, the, the response is twofold the first is we need to decrease the parasympathetic outflow to the heart. Why is that? Is because if we have increased parasympathetic, it will be a uh, slow heart rate, and we don't want that. We need to increase that heart rate, and in order to have high blood pressure, or we need to increase at least have a normal blood pressure if it's low right now because of an acute hemorrhage. So our patient needs to have increased heart rate. So, like I said, it's twofold. The first one is decreasing the parasympathetic outflow to the heart doing that increases the heart rate and also another way is to increase the sympathetic outflow to the heart which is the system of fight or flight and uh, doing that we have multiple things that happen and so right here uh, we were just talking about the increased sympathetic what happens is we increase heart rate so you uh, in the flight or fight system when you're running you as you can imagine you increase heart rate so this is what the body does or what this is what the barrier receptors do they increase the heart rate they increase contractility and also we have increasing cons constriction of the arterioles which uh, leads to increase of total uh, peripheral resistance we also have constriction of the veins and I'm gonna actually go ahead and talk about each one of those, but just, just to get a big picture now, constriction of the veins, we have decreased unstressed volume, we have increased venous return, and increased mean systemic pressure. All of that, doing all of this, the big picture is we raise the blood pressure, or the arterial pressure, and then the, we normalize the blood pressure instead of it being low during this acute hemorrhage that we have, uh, for example. So now that we, we talked about uh, the, the different things that are uh, done in order to increase the blood pressure, let's go through one by one. Uh, now, we 
I have it's important to note that the set point that, uh, of the mean arterial pressure is about 100 uh, millimeters of mercury. That's why if we have a pay, uh, our, blood, our normal blood pressure is 120 over 80. So if it goes down to 100, our system recognizes that this is low and it does what it needs to do in order to raise that blood pressure and normalize it. So the responses of the vasomotor uh, center, they uh, uh, done in order to d uh, decrease mean arterial blood pressure are coordinated in order to increase the arterial pressure to about 100 millimeters per mercury. This response is, uh, as we talked, decrease the parasympathetic vagal outflow to the heart and increases the sympathetic outflow to the heart. So I'm just restating what I said. Now, let's look at the effect of the heart rate. So we have here increased heart rate, and this results from the decreased parasympathetic tone and the increased sympathetic tone, which makes sense. Now, let's look at the contractility. Now, the contractility and stroke volume, actually, it re it is, they result from the sympathetic system, as we can see at this side of the figure. And uh, these, uh, together, they will increase heart rate. And uh, this, as you can imagine, increasing heart rate will also increase in contractility and stroke volume. And all of that in uh, totally will increase the cardiac output, which increases the arterial pressure. So let's remember, again, this there is an equation that's well known. Cardiac output equals stroke volume times heart rate. So we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to increase cardiac capital, we're trying to increase heart rate, we're trying to increase the stroke volume in order to get blood flowing everywhere. So moving right along, uh, we will be talking about the vasoconstriction of the arterioles here, which lead to increased total peripheral resistance. What does that mean? It, it means pretty much uh, that uh, when our body is low blood pressure, this vasoconstriction of the arterioles result from an increased sympathetic outflow and this increases resistance in our body and the ar and arterial pressure will also increase because when you vasoconstrict and the resistance is increased you are uh, increasing the flow to the heart and therefore you're increasing the cardiac output and increasing blood pressure now now let's talk about this last point here of uh, our uh, discussion of barrier receptor control which is the constriction of veins now, constriction of veins uh, is also resulting from the sympathetic outflow, and this causes a decreased and unstressed volume. And uh, this uh, would make sense because if we have increased stress volume, then we are defeating the purpose of increasing blood pressure. Also, same thing with venous return. What, what we're trying to do is we were trying to promote more volume going into the heart, which is the venous return, which comes into the uh, superior vena cava to the heart and uh, by increasing the venous return we're helping more volume to go in the in the system to increase blood pressure and that's done by constriction of the veins. Uh, uh, finally we increase the mean arterial pressure which makes sense with all what we have done and that leads to uh, increase in arterial uh, pressure. Now, uh, this is the video for uh, regulation of arterial pressure, and we're, next video we'll be talking about the hormonally regulated renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. Thank you.